So when it comes to the properties of a transaction, I will be following one of the important property that is going to be the asset property. So guys, the first state of the transaction that we have is all about active state. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on a very important topic that we have in the unit number four of database management system. So guys, that's going to be a overview of transaction management. So, are you not uh, repeating the same thing what we have discussed in the unit 2? Yes, my dear students. So, whatever the concepts that we have in the unit 2 transactions, so we have some of the concepts that we have in the fourth unit also. So, it's very important that you need to understand the concept uh, with respect to the transactions, what we have done in the unit 2. So, without wasting much of your time, let me give you a quick recap of what we have done in the unit 2. So, guys, transaction along with that transaction schedules is what I will be discussing in the session for all of you without wasting much of your time let's get into the session so you all know that transaction is a single unit which performs uh, which will execute multiple tasks inside that and uh, most important thing with respect to the transaction is uh, the transaction can be executed completely or it will be having a state that is it is not executed. Suppose if there is one single thing which is pending, I will not say that the transaction is complete. So that is the most important thing that you need to remember. So yes, sir, it's very important that I need to understand the properties of the transaction. So what are the meaning of properties? Properties will define or it will tell me exactly what exactly the transaction is all about. So I can also call it as a characteristics of a transaction. So when it comes to the properties of a transaction, I will be following one of the important property that is going to be the asset property. What exactly asset property is all about? So is it, uh, can you please tell me so that I can easily remember this? Yes, asset in the sense like A for atomic, C for consistency, isolation that is for I, durability for D. This is what you need to remember so that you can easily remember this topics. So what exactly atomicity is all about? So guys, you would have studied in the chemistry. Atomic in the sense what? A smallest particle is what we call it as an atom, right? So which I cannot further divide. So in the same way, when I take a transaction, I will not be able to, or I should not be able to divide that transaction into a sub-transaction. That should be the last state of the transaction. So that is what you need to remember with respect to a transaction. A transaction should have a property of atomicity. So that should be the last finest level. So I, I should not be able to divide that into further is what you need to remember. The second one that we have consistency. When it comes to the consistency, so my dear students, what exactly the consistency in the sense? When it comes to the consistency, you need to remember one example always. Say for example, if I ask you, tell me your marks. So what is that you will tell me? So some of you will say that, no, I've got 60%. Some of you will say that I've got first class. Some of you will say that uh, I got uh, 365 marks in total. So observe, some of you are saying in percentage, some of you are saying in total, some of you are saying in class. There is no consistency. So the value is getting varied from one to another. That's what you need to observe here. So if I say that, the examples what I have given is inconsistent. Then what is consistency? So could you please tell me? So in the same example to understand. Yes. So guys, if I ask you the marks, you will you should say either in percentage or in total or in class. The answer should be same throughout. Say for example, so I'll ask you the marks. So guys, you will be saying 66%. 55%, 75%, 85%, all the answers, whatever the students have given here is in percentage. So this is consistency. So any transaction, if I take the transaction should have the concept of consistency. So that is what you need to remember with respect to the consistency. And the next one that we have is all about the isolation. Isolation in the sense what? Independent. It is it is not dependent with respect to anything. So the transaction, if I take, so that is isolated, separated, single. So it is nowhere dependent to any other thing. So if I want to execute the transaction, so I should not be, or the transaction should not be dependent on anything. So or it should not disturb any other thing. So that is what I will call it as a isolation. Even the transaction should have that property. 
And the last one that we have is durability. Guys, it should be, uh, it should be able to uh, sustain a lot of, lot of, uh, you know, uh, unavoidable circumstances. So, so, for example, I have executed the transaction. Once the transaction is executed successfully, even if anything happens, I should be able to retain the data, what I have saved. So that is what I will call it as a durability. So that should be there for a transaction is what you need to remember with respect to the durability. So all these four topics, we have discussed it already in the unit two. So you should also have the recap because it is mentioned in the syllabus that you have to go through. The next important topic that we have is all about the states of transaction. Guys, when it comes to the state of transaction, so let me not show you the theory. Let me show you the diagram so that you will be able to understand it very clearly. So guys, the first state of the transaction that we have is all about active state. So this is the initial state of any transaction. So once I create the transaction, once the transaction is initiated, so it will be in this state. So fine, after the state, there is a possibility of going to partially committed or it can also go to the failed state. So what happens here? When it comes to the partial state, so the transaction has completely executed the final statement. So it is just waiting for the next state. So the next state is what? Committed state. So this is the final state where it ends. The transaction is going to get committed. Committed in the sense, the state of the transaction is saved and it is finally, it is done with its task. That's what I will call it as a committed. So, but now observe here, when it comes to the failed transaction. So during the execution of the transaction, it has got some of the data which is missing. So in that case, the execution of the transaction fails and it will move to the next state that is aborted state. So that transaction is not considered, it is aborted, the no data, whatever the data that we have executed in this transaction that will be rolled back. So it will go to the previous state. So whatever the changes that uh, was there before we start this transaction, so it will come to that particular state and it will end. That's what you need to remember when it comes to the aborted state. So guys, this is the five different states of transaction is what you need to remember. All right. So guys, with this, I think I have given you the brief recap of what we have discussed in the previous session. In the coming session, I will be discussing some of the important topics like how do we schedule the transactions. So till then, so wait for my session. Thank you. Bye bye.